Right, so today I'm going to review the Fiskars X27. Now, I'm pretty sure this is going to draw some fanboys and kind of nasty, uh, deluded comments out of the woodwork. So, um, please watch the whole video before you comment and uh, try and keep it civil. It's just an axe. It's not worth getting worked up about or, um, you know, being rude. I think it's important to cover the background of this axe and how I got it. Um, before starting and uh, basically I did not buy this axe. Yeah, I found it at work um, dealing with a rather nasty house and uh, it looked fairly new when I when I got it. Um, there was no sign of any cracking, abrasion, otherwise damage. There's no mashing on the pole. It looked like a fairly new axe although it's I think I'm not quite sure, but I think it's a slightly older generation of Fiskars. Um, but uh, certainly it wasn't in poor shape. Now, at the moment I've been doing quite a lot of work uh, cutting firewood. Um, I work at an estate and they have uh, some quite large firewood sheds that have been pretty empty. So we've been really grafting away and trying to fill them up as soon as possible. And... Uh, I was uh, working with some other guys, you know, they're good guys, they're not really like forestry workers or anything, but uh, they're used to manual labour, they can swing an axe and swing hammers and all that, so they're not they're not clowns anyway. Now one of them did manage to bake this after four days of work, it wasn't his fault at all, I do not think. It was a single overstrike on a piece of wood, and uh, Really, my action to was I was just <laughs> rather impressed. I wasn't angry at all. And uh, to see it actually happen in real life, I never thought uh, it would break that easy. Now, uh, a lot of you will probably be assuming that uh, the guy I was working, working with was really, really hulking the axe and really like trying to slam his way through the woods and just using too much power and all this to, to actually be able to break one of these. That was absolutely not the case. Uh, it was about four hours into the day just getting up to about lunchtime. Um, quite a hot day for Scotland. We were wearing chainsaw trousers and all that, so you get pretty hot. And, uh, you know, we're all kind of tired at that point. Um, so you're not really got the energy to swing particularly hard. So it was a decent, decent power hit, but not something excessive, not something like, uh, you know, if your gym, gym buddy came over uh, and was like, splitting with drunk and whatever and you he had some kind of macho thing to prove how strong he was and he just really slammed it um so yeah it wasn't like that but uh these things are not indestructible as i said i did not find any clear sign of damage when i visually inspected this sometimes plastics can be a bit weird like that where they can look fine but break but uh Really, the axe did not look like it was in any poor shape, so I think it may be a manufacturing defect. The brake um, appears to be along the seam at the back, like a, and then it's uh, further down as well, but um, pretty catastrophic anyway. It was, you know, there's no way of fixing this, of course, fixing it safely. Um, and uh, this can basically go in the bin. Oh, we'll take the plastic off the head. So if anybody wants the head, um, I've seen some people put wood handles on them, particularly uh, uh, Rodney JP. Uh, he's got a video called The Finnish Unicorn you can check out on doing that. And uh, yeah, so if anyone wants this head, I will send it to you as long as you cover postage. So probably best if you're only in the UK because it would be a bit ridiculous to ship this to America. The, the postage would be more than it's worth. So a freebie for anyone who wants it. I know some people may see this as wasteful, you know, not being able to repair this tool. But uh, I just finished a, a four year course on environmental and renewable technology. And uh, when you look at life cycle assessments, this really is not bad. Um, you know, most people don't even repair wooden handles anyway. When you look at it compared to other consumer goods, this is really just a drop in the ocean. 
um, you know, this handle while it's going in the bin um, or see if there's a way to recycle it. You know, this is maybe a 20th of the materials used to make a front bumper on a car. Similarly with this head, it's uh, 1.8 kilos of steel. It's easily recyclable and uh, compared to a car again, and people throw out their cars every five years sometimes. So that, compared to a wood handle that's more natural and uh, renewable, I don't really think there is much difference. While it was working, it worked for about four days of hard graft. It was a good axe. Um, the head design I liked. It split well. It doesn't bounce off the wood too much. Only on the worst pieces does it bounce a bit. But it uh, penetrates into the wood and then really throws the wood apart. So the head design is excellent. It's as good as anything out there on the market, in my opinion. Um, I have used quite a lot of axes, even though I don't own them in my collection. My girlfriend's father's got a quite substantial connection with uh, a lot of different stuff to me, including some expensive stuff like Grandpa's bucks. And uh, in all honesty, this works just as good as anything else I've used. So, head design is excellent. The handle, a lot of people complain about shock. I did not have any issues with shock and uh, similarly I've not had any issues with shock with this Husqvarna, a similar design. Um, maybe that's just me but there's a lot of professional firewood splitters that I've seen using these and um, I think it may be partially due to people death gripping and really like holding on too hard. If you have a more relaxed grip um, the shock doesn't seem to transfer as much, but really the shock in this handle is far less than a thick hickory handle. So no complaints there. It should have been robust. I think really think this was just a kind of a one in a million. You know, the, the handle's fine. Uh, there's nothing really that much to say about it apart from it did break. And that's one thing I want to bring up. This axe broke. Does that mean that this tool is flawed? Not really, no. I'd say these Fiskars is probably one of the most popular axe brands in the world and just because you know there's maybe a dozen or so or uh, maybe even a hundred cases of people managing to bite them and reporting that on forums or uh, making videos like me on it. Statistically that's very very good. It's worth noting that people tend to review stuff normally on a negative base rather than positive. And, uh, you know, if a thousand of these axes are made and, you know, one breaks, well, that's fairly good going. And as far as the Fiskars warranty, I've heard great things about it. I don't think I'll be eligible for the warranty since I didn't actually purchase this and I have no proof of purchase or date of purchase or anything like that. So I'm not too worried about that. I think. There's enough out there on Fisker's warranty to recommend and say they're a good company as far as dealing with that. But um, for me, I don't think I'm going to buy another one and uh, I've kind of done everything I want with this axe anyway. You know, it's a big event with one of these indestructible handles and I would say indestructible is a bit of a bold claim, um, clearly by this evidence. But, uh, you know, when one of these plastic handles breaks, it's a massive deal to people and they get very, very worked up and, you know, write big rant, ranty comments on it. There's plenty of evidence out there of these being, you know, 10 times, if not 100 times more robust than a wood handle. When a wood handle breaks, nobody really bats an eye. Despite my experience of seeing this break after one overstrike, I do think it was a lemon. There's other advantages to this handle system. I mean, normally quality control is much easier than trying to make wooden handles. The hanging's easier because it's just moulded into the handle. You don't need to pay someone to um, do a good or a bad job of hanging the axe where it's all crooked and um, going to fly off all the time and all that kind of thing. So that's good for a good advantage of these. Plus, I like to store these in my car. Um, so they're ready for work. They just live in there. They don't uh, come inside and get oil or anything like that, any maintenance. So, you know, they deal with changes in humidity better. Whereas a wood handle, if you leave them 
in like a vehicle where it gets very hot and dry and then other times can be quite damp. Um, you know, I've had problems with wood handles uh, starting to wiggle a bit and had to put metal wedges and all that. So, yeah, these are really good tools. There's no, there's no question in that in my mind about that. However, my preference after using the Fiskars is still my Husqvarna. I think it is a far superior tool, especially if you only want to buy one, one axe. Um, like most homers generally um, who are asking for recommendations they normally get a lot of recommendations for the Fiskars I think this Husqvarna is a much better tool it looks a bit ugly admittedly but uh, I've found it to be just about one of the most useful tools I've ever bought main advantage over the Fiskars well the handle is very similar but uh, it's much more reinforced in this area up here the collar. Um, this is a far more robust design. It's got more of a like a shock absorber. <clears throat> it's got more of like a shock absorber at the back and really beefed up here. And it's actually got a hardened pole which can drive wedges such as aluminium and plastic wedges. They don't recommend driving steel wedges, but uh, in all honesty, I have and I've not had any issues with that. So. Take that with a grain of salt, but uh, this thing's solid, really, really solid. This is their universal axe, so it's got slightly different geometry. It still splits very, very well in most woods. It can be a little bit sticky in softer woods, but if you do want a basic a Fisker's head, they do what's called the S2800, which has a basic a Fisker's head with the same design, and it's a bit heavier. Handle length, um, I find this shorter handle length more handy in general. Um, I like to use this for chainsaw work, so occasionally I will cut off limbs of it. Um, I find that this length a bit more handy for pounding wedges and just generally easier to carry and gets in the way less. The 36 inch handle on the Fiskars X27, while it does provide a lot of power, um, perhaps a bit too much power, and that's why I tend to see these break more often than the X25s. Uh, it's just a bit uh, less multi-purpose. It's a, a lot safer to swing because it will hit the ground first, but I think that kind of makes lazy axemen and you really should be focusing on your technique and not relying on a handle to keep yourself safe. So perhaps the long handle's better for beginners and uh, you know, if you have your kids help you split firewood and all that, then yeah, 36 is better, but uh, Personally, I'll find this length more handy. So, essentially, I think the Husqvarna plastic axes are significantly superior to the Fiskars. They're just a bit more robustly designed and the hardened pole is just really, really worth its weight in gold. Not just for doing forestry stuff like splitting uh, with wedges, but uh, general handling. I use it a lot of work for all kinds of just demolition stuff and uh, breaking up old brickwork and things like that. So just a really really good companion that's really pulled its weight and uh, oh I've got I think I paid like 50 quid for this and I've got 50 quid's worth of value out of this. This is I think three years old now. It's looking a bit worse for wear but uh, no sign of giving up. As for the Fiskars to conclude, uh, my experience with it wasn't so great. Does that mean everyone's experience is going to be the same? Absolutely not. That's a foolish thing to way to think. But uh, the breakage aside, it was a very good axe. Um, had a lot of power, split well. But um, I still prefer my Husqvarna. And I think uh, most people will get more utility out of the Husqvarna, especially if you're doing the chainsaw work. If you're just a homeowner who gets like rounds of wood delivered and you don't do the chainsawing yourself, then the Fiskars is probably a better option. But even then, if you've got particularly nasty rounds and you need to use aluminium splitting wedges, then this again becomes a no-brainer. I mean, if you're doing a sledgehammer or some kind of tool for driving those wedges 
And then the X27 is great. But in any case, um, I think Fiskars probably should look at redesigning this so the this area here is a bit more robust because I have seen quite a few of these break in that area admittedly after quite a lot of work but uh, you know I do think this is kind of a weak spot in this design so a bit of a better sweep review I would have liked to see how the warranty process went as well but uh, looking into it I don't think I've got uh, much uh, chance of actually getting it and I don't particularly want to um, take advantage of the, the warranty system when I didn't actually purchase this. So, you know, if I got sent to no one, well, yeah, I could do a bit more of it, but I think I've made my mind up about this design anyway. So, thank you for watching and I hope this is insightful and uh, please uh, try and keep comments civil. I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, thanks for watching.